Ask the Doctor, episode 4. Nice, yes, let's kick it. I'm Dr. Hans, this is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel about beer and home brewing. In this mini series, I pick some of your questions from earlier video and try to answer them as good as possible. Questions and comments. So let's start with the first one. I will link down below to all the videos that these questions come from. First question, this is from the Shake and Bitter, and I think we have two questions here we could probably answer in like the same time. Metro Mike 67, beautiful clear finish beer. All of the hops and truth came out in the first pint. This is somehow related, even though it's not. Paul Roberts, silly question alert. No, no, it's not, it's not a silly question. Do the hops not become a grassy taste? I've always been under the impression you need to remove hop matter, especially dry hopping. In the shake and brew, I used a floating pickup with a filter and I left everything in the uh, in the keg so it will stay there until the the keg is finished I have never have any issues with that and uh, I have not got grassy beer from leaving dry hop or hop matters from in this case like the not the boil but yeah check out the shaken shake and brew playlist link down below yes Nice. Yes, thank you. Hit that like button, it would be freaking awesome. The only time I have had grassy beer is from overusing hops that have grassy tendencies or me using too old hops that have not been stored well. I have never got grassy beers from leaving them for a very long time in uh, the like pressure fermenter, for example. Or a cake. Cheers. Doctor, I always rinse my kegs after I sanitize. Is this necessary? Also, what sanitizer do you use? Love the content, bud. Thank you. Yes, Sweet Talk will always, of course, uh, bring your comments on the show. <laughs> I use Star San and Sunnyclean. For like kegs, I use Sunnyclean because I don't want like the, the foam warm, if you know what I mean. And uh, it's, it's much easier, but you don't need to rinse it. But if you want to rinse it, I would suggest rinsing it with boiling water because that's awesome in, in kegs. It gives you like a second sanitizer, but no, you don't need to rinse it. Actually, what I do that I, I take sanitizer and boiling water and shake the living crap out of it. So I get sanitized, both the sanitizer and the, the boiling water. Hope that helped. Cheers. This is a quite long one from Andy Willis. And this is from my ultimate CO2 calculator, which can be used for like dialing in what pressure you want to end your fermentation at according to the temperature and volumes of CO2 wanted. Also have suggestions for a lot of beer styles. You can go and check out that video. Dr. Hans, another great video. Though those pressures for fermentation seems very high, from the research and experimentation I've done thus far, it appears the fermentation becomes inhibited at above 30 psi and esters are suppressed. Great lager is not so good for other styles. The only thing I can think, looking at the temperature your calculator suggests, is that high temperature combined with higher pressure allow the yeast to keep working. Is this your experience? Thanks. Whew. Keep <laughs> Keep them short. When I started pressure fermenting, and I don't think there is another channel that has so much content about pressure fermentation, because when I started pressure fermenting, I fell in love with it. And there were not so much content out there about it. And you had to use special yeast, uh, high pressure log yeast from White Labs. First I tried. And I didn't know that you are not supposed to pressurize your fermenter or do pressurize fermenter as with such a great pressure. My vessel said, don't pressurize over 35 PSI, 2.4 bars. So I'm like an all in person, on or off binary person. I kind of maxed it and used the temperature for that. And I never had an issue with uh, like beers not fermenting and I never had an issue with not getting esters. Then after a couple of years 
a lot more people starting to um, get into pressurized fermentation and then they told me that I have been doing it wrong that it doesn't work that way but it has been working for me for, for, for many years if you don't want to pressurize that much then don't do it but I calculate my pressure according to the, uh, the temperature of course with higher temperature the yeast will be more active so that could be a, a factor I never tried at like 35 psi at 12 degrees celsius because that would totally overcarb your beer I was just aiming to get quick fermentation and um, get my beers naturally carved like lock in the flavors and uh, keep oxygen out that lagers should not have esters is another myth that we could uh, address in uh, another upcoming video that esters get suppressed in a bad way no nope, I've not experienced that at all I did a uh, pressure versus no pressure and uh, it's an ant eating me. I did an experiment with pressure versus no pressure. And uh, I found that the... No, I will link down below to that video. I heard the same thing you have mentioned, of course. But I have not really experienced it. On to the next one. Cheers. This video is sponsored by my Patreon and channel members. Thank you so much for your support i couldn't keep on doing this without you and if you like what i do here and want to help out you can check out patreon or becoming channel members or just buy me a beer all links down below from the pressure fermentation q a video one i've done three q a videos on pressurized fermentations you can go and check out those videos this is from skelta skib hi dr hans love your videos do you still use the same temperatures and pressures as you say in this video, 24C lagers, 30C ales at two bar. No, I don't. I can't remember exactly now why I said it in video, but uh, no, I, I don't. Some of the new videos you use 15 psi. First off, if I'm gonna dry hop, I will always set the uh, pressure a little bit lower. As for the uh, 24C for lagers and 30C for ales. You have to realize that I often like try to push the limits here. My recommendation with like a new yeast you haven't tried before, that you start at the high recommendation temperature from the manufacturer. As the fermentation goes on, maybe in a couple of days, it depends on, on how fast it's going. Then you can bump up the pressure, you can bump up the temperature accordingly to the uh, carbonation volumes you want or if it's after dry hopping I would suggest dry hopping when it's still activity so then you could bump up pressure and temperature then I would recommend you using my calculator this is from a video I did about brewing alcohol free beer three different ways and uh, I have not really gotten back into that but I will do it sometime in the future that does not mean that you should subscribe to my channel because my channel suck and that's better that if you instead go to someone else's channel and subscribe to them. There are some really amazing channels about homebrewing. This is not the channel you want to be subscribed to. So this comment is from Simon Saxton. He wants to try this and he's talking about boiling of alcohol after fermentation. I want to try this. How is carbonation achieved when bottling? I mean, if you boil the alcohol off, then the yeast would be dead. So batch priming might produce anything, might not produce anything. Either that you carbonate with pressure instead. So you force carb it in a keg or something, then you can bottle it. Or you add sugar and new yeast. Then you will have, of course, some alcohol there. I would probably keg it and carve it. And this is from the glass versus pet bottle oxidization experiment. It's a fly here. Got it. This is from Damashni Pivavat Van Beer. And your comment. Yeah. What do you say about that? Spatsiba. <laughs> Next comment from Marcus Roos. 
please write the pressure ferment beer bible. Uh, the problem is that my English aren't that good, especially not in written. I think people, when they hear me and I have an accent because I'm from Sweden, they kind of accept bad English. But when that is taken out of the equation and they just read something that is in bad English, that's not acceptable. And when I set up my web page by the way if you go to my web page and sign up for my spamming list you will get my free ebook with three awesome recipes for you to try out specialty beers so i tried to do some blog posts and i got a lot of hate for those so uh no i don't think that is a good idea sorry then it would be had to be like a video bible instead but uh, i had uh, done three Q&A videos and we're talking a lot about pressurized fermentation here also in this one. This is from a video I tried to ferment lager super hot and this question comes from Maestro PDX. What PSI are you lagering at under pressure? Well it depends uh, on the method but the answer is at the pressure which combined with the temperature I'm lagering it will give me the amount of carbonation that I want. Yet again, use the calculator, choose the beer style you are lagering at, and then you will get a suggested pressure. But if you have already reached the carbonation level you want, you can just take off the spawning valve and cool down your beer to lagering temperature then the pressure in the keg or fermenter will drop down to that pressure. So you don't need to push any pressure onto the fermenter keg when lagering, you already have pressure. One really cool video I made was doing pressurized transfer between two transparent vessels you can really see what's happening how fast you actually can push because we are transferring to a stainless steel keg you can't see what's happening but in this video you can see exactly what's happened you can see we can start pushing up the speed there so if you haven't seen that one go and check that one out otherwise thanks for watching and i guess i'll see you in the next one cheers Hey, dog.